Mike Shaggin, everybody. Welcome to another edition of House Divided here on Orange Bloods Live. I am Jeff Ketchum. That is Chad Hastings. We will be with you for like the next hour or so talking Texas football, talking about the portal. We will play portal, uh, portal combat soon. Before we do that, though, let's just remind everybody, smash that thumbs up button. Do it right now. Do it like, like you're an Aggie. It, oh, I shouldn't have probably done Ooh. that. Just hit the mm. thumbs up, though. Like, smash it. Beat it up. Mm. Something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take your subscriptions, and you know, you might as well get notifications while you're at it. Uh, shout out to everybody coming into the Specs chat. We do appreciate all your live comments and questions and super chats. By all means, super chat away. Uh Today, the portal opened. So we're going to play portal combat and get into the discussion as it relates to the Texas Longhorns. We'll probably give you a pretty good idea of who might be next. Um, so all that to come. But Chad, Steve Sarkeesian met with the media less than an hour ago. Probably should lead off with all of the newsy little things related to the, to the Texas football team, including Arch Manning, biggest day of the spring so far Today, according to Sark, volleyball clap for Arch Manning. He he had a practice that Sark said best out of thirteen so far. It's a not, not a bad place to start. Four days away from the spring game. Couple more times that Sark. I guess it's today and maybe Thursday. We'll get to hear a little bit from Sark before the game itself on how things are are playing out. But yeah, why not? Let's start with sixteen because catch. No matter what happens on Saturday, Texas fans are going to get a good look at Arch Manning, and theoretically, it would be Arch Manning and the two offense going up against whatever the one defense is at the time. That's what we would expect. So, got to be ready for uh, you know for a lot of sixteen breakdown. A lot of reality with Arch Manning is coming on Saturday. First of all. We're being somewhat facetious with the volleyball clap and everything, but don't be surprised if this is on the front page of ESPN.com later in the top five headlines, maybe even rolling on the scroll. Arch Manning had best practice to date is the kind of thing that like national people will lose their minds over. And I think that there's an instant instinctive reaction uh, for some Texas fans right now, or it's like, well, he's the backup quarterback. So that only means so much right now, but not, not in Bristol, not in Los Angeles, not in the SEC, pick a state, Nashville, wherever. Like anytime Arch Manning does anything, uh, it's a headline. And today Sarkeesian said he had what he thought was his best practice of the spring. He made a point to say he thought he was okay in, in the scrimmage as well, but today he really saw something. Hey, Better than not. So, you know, let's not pretend like we won't be wondering uh, in a few weeks and months about where Arch is in his development. And, you know, Sarkeesian telling us that as a data point that towards the end of workouts, Arch had one of his best workouts. Okay, good to know. File that away. Backup quarterback not sucking every single day. I mean, I, again, it's a little facetious, but it's Arch Manning. Uh, and, and it won't be long before Arch Manning dominates everything that we talk about. That literally is just around the corner. Um, I think what th the second point, though, is you mentioned the spring game. One of the things that Sark said today is they haven't yet, as a coaching staff, decided how much some of the ones are going to play. That they want to get as many reps for young players as possible. So he said specifically, like, I don't know how much we're going to play Quinn Ewers or Alfred Collins. Um, that could be a metaphor for a lot of players. Maybe not a metaphor, but maybe an example of the type of profile they may sit down. So if Quinn doesn't play a lot on Saturday, it means we'll see a lot of 16. And maybe that won't be a bad thing. Like maybe getting two hours of Arch Manning – and getting a real good look at him, maybe that isn't a terrible thing also. So the starting quarterback may be limited somewhat on Saturday, but the backup won't be, and that will be a big deal. And knowing that he just came off such a good practice today, you know, okay, maybe let's see more of 16 
than we thought. Uh, and then just real quick, among the other things that Sarkeesian talked about today, kind of talked about the scrimmage. You know, it's Tuesday, so it's been four days. We've we've had a lot of conversation um, about the scrimmage, but he said a lot of the same notes and names that we said. He singled out Malik Muhammad. Uh, he singled out Andrew Makuba, which interesting given that we know that Makuba's in a, a battle for playing time. Uh, at the safety position, along with Michael Taft, Jure Bledsoe, Colin Simmons, Trey Moore, all names that were in Orange Bloods. Uh, I know Simmons and Moore certainly were. Muhammad was discussed as like one of maybe the best players on the field on Saturday. Um, he talked about the running backs, mentioned everybody but Savion Red, which, you know, when we get into portal combat here in a little bit, it's probably not insignificant that he – that he's got six running backs on scholarship right now, Chad, and five of them were mentioned today in positive terms. Like, likes the combination of Baxter and Blue. Wisner's got all-around ability that they really like. Jarrett Gibson had the best practice of his first 13 practices today. And, oh, by the way, Christian Clark continues to be really good, and we thought he scrimmaged well on Saturday. And then it was a little bit of like, oh, you guys waiting on something else? Mm. There is nothing else. That's that's my report on the running back position. Um, so, look, we're going to get into portal combat in a little bit. And there will be, without having to say Savion Red's name in conjunction with that, we will describe, can't like, there's profiles that when they announce that they're entering the portal, you should probably have seen coming from a mile away. We will certainly get into that discussion pretty quickly here. Yeah, before we go portal, I do want you to comment on something else Sark said. But before that, we do have a chat that we need to address. Buck Wild, Longhorn. Guys, I found out this morning I'm going to be a dad for the first time. Look at that. Well done. Well done. Well done. And if I'm not mistaken, Buck Wild is our truck driver. So, from orange bloods i thought about buck wild the other day my kids went on a field trip Mm -hmm. they went to like huntsville to the sam houston museum Mm -hmm. so i know they were on the highway and i wondered if they i I had to ask them did you guys ask any of the truckers to make you know to blow the horn they looked at me like i was an alien they had no idea what i was talking about i felt very old because when i was a kid that was like something Catch, now what we need to do is somebody needs to create an app where the kids text the drivers and it comes up as an emoji that does this. Yeah. That's the only that's the only way they'll do it. It's the only they way they'll just do it. looked at me like <laughs> you why? Why did you do that? And it was like, oh, because it sounded cool when the trucker and they just looked at me like okay, they don't dad, sure. If you yeah, say so. They don't know. Uh, catch before we get into portal stuff, uh, we we started talking about Arch. I don't think we talked about the comments he made about Quinn Ewers. Uh, if I'm a Texas fan, I like what I'm hearing about number three. And let's say, you know, maybe there's not like, you know, maybe Quinn Ewers doesn't get a massive amount of reps like you're talking about. Maybe the maybe it's not all about him. It does sound like last Saturday though, Sark saw what he wanted to out of his starter. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, look, Sarkeesian point called Quinn Ewers. Uh, performance on Saturday, tremendous. I thought that was an interesting choice of words because we know from the scrimmage was that the offense didn't go up and down the field in scrimmage settings, but that it performed really well in the red zone. And Sarkeesian made a point to mention that he thought they did a good job in the red zone. The red zone has been an area that that they, they've been wanting to improve in. So – checking boxes kind of left and right, I suppose. I think it's interesting because it may be that he saw enough from from Ewers on Saturday and then today that getting to Saturday's dog and pony show, it may be a little bit like, you know what? We're, we maybe don't need to play three a whole lot in this scrimmage that – We've seen him now in multiple scrimmages. We felt like Saturday he was tremendous. You know, I think it'd be a little bit different if they felt like 
he was struggling even a little bit that you'd want him to end the spring on a good note. I wonder if they feel like doing that now is accomplishing that, that, Hey, you know what? We're going to protect you. We know what we've got from you. We want to see young players play. And you were tremendous on Saturday. Really good today. You know, Thursday, my anticipation would be a little bit like of a walkthrough for getting ready for Saturday. So today would have been probably their last big physical practice. I think Sark called it like a big physical practice uh, before they get into the spring game. Maybe now we're going to see them kind of take – they're just going to take the ball out of Ewers' hand. We'll see him on Saturday, but we may not see him in the second half on Saturday. We might see two or three drives, probably see him end on a successful drive. Mm -hmm. Offense goes down the field, scores a touchdown. We're good. Quinn, you go sit on the sideline. Go on the Longhorn Network, do a live in-game interview. Let's get Arch in there. And you know what? Woo! You're healthy leaving the spring, and we sure love the sound of that. Yeah. I like what you're saying in theory. Uh, if we'd had a bunch of reports of him becoming comfortable with a receiver, and if that receiving core had really stepped up, I, I could go towards that line of thinking. I think Sark needs to think about this as whatever his normal, whatever the normal spring game would be. I think there needs to be, find those, whatever, whatever it means to have meaningful reps with Quinn Ewers and this group of receivers. He has to develop familiarity. And you talk about seeing young guys. Some of those, one of the most important young guys is John Tay Cook. And I think reps with Ewers is a big deal. Maybe it doesn't need to be as many, but I think there needs to be a good amount of viewers and that offense on Saturday where Texas fans aren't walking out of there thinking, wait a second, hold on. What, what, like, what, what's going on? Um, well, I, what I don't think it can look like that. Like, I think they're going to pick their spot on Saturday when it ends with viewers having success. Right. The, Almost the like last, a the last taste they're going to get of viewers, I think, in the spring game will be, oh, that was badass, and then they'll take him out. It won't be, yeah, these so, dudes need to go back yeah. to work on Monday. So what you're hoping for is, and this is for the youngsters, they're going to have to go back a little bit and ask their moms and dads. You're talking about like a dress rehearsal preseason game in the NFL when we were kids, where the starters would get out there, they'd get a rhythm going, maybe – Somewhere in Maybe. between, because I don't think it's – when we were kids, they played into the well, fourth I, quarter. But, but, yeah, it's true. But it also I, – I can remember in 1985 going to the Texas Cowboys-Houston Oilers preseason mm -hmm. game, and it was a preseason game, and it felt like a real yeah, game. that's true. Okay, you're right. Maybe it's the middle because one of those games where get them out there in the third quarter – Good for good drive that ends in a touchdown. Then you put a cap on if you're the quarterback. I'm saying it might go a couple of drives less than okay. that, but look, it might not. What Sarkeesian said is they haven't decided yet. So, what you know what that might mean? They're having the same conversation that we're having yep. right now to some degree. It's you know what? He's gonna because because Sark could easily say, Look. Whatever happens on Saturday, it doesn't change anything that's happened up until Saturday. That we we have a pretty good idea of where things are. Now we're going into the next few months. And when it comes to timing and connections and consistency and catching the football, because Sark did mention wide receivers dropping the ball in the scrimmage mm -hmm. on Saturday. I don't think they'll view anything that happens on this, – this reminds me of Malik Murphy last year. When Murphy had a really good spring performance, the coaches came out of that going, well, okay. Okay. Like, that's that was really nice, but we also watched the last 14 practices, and we know that what he did there is not what he does every day. So there's a very skeptical mind of, we'll need to see it again in August. But cool. Like, I, I think that there's not an overreaction to what happens on Saturday – I think Sarkeesian will say he'll be throwing with this group of wide receivers for the next few months, and when he does that, there won't be potential bodies falling at his feet. And I think 
I think the thing that you would be worried about on Saturday is, God, we're, we think we're going to be really good. We made it through spring workouts. Let's not get to the goal line and lose a bad injury or something that would affect. So I think, you know, you're erring severely on the side of yep. caution, but I think he'll think once they finish up finals, they'll go home for a little bit. They'll be back on June 1st, all of June, most of July that he'll be throwing with these guys. And then we'll see him on August and we'll get 15 more practices, just like the ones that we had. I think they feel like they're right in the middle of something. No need to take any unnecessary risks. I think by the time we get to the unofficial halftime, there's a very good chance that yours will be done by that point, but not like he does two series and he's right. out, but maybe he does three or four and that by and if the offense is having any success at all, I think you feel good about it. And you're like, look, let's get Arch as many reps as possible because he won't get a ton when we get into the season if yours stays healthy. You want to get Trey Owen some work. He is one of these guys getting a sprained ankle away from being on the two deep. And look, Sark even mentioned fourth string Cole Lord today and saying five in the scrimmage. And it's like, oh, okay, well. Fourth team versus fourth team. He went five for five. I mean, okay, yay. But I think he wanted to point out that he felt like his quarterback play in general across the board was playing pretty strongly. I think we'll see some Cole Lord on Saturday. Up over 400 folks in the Specs chat. We do appreciate it. We're going to get into Portal Combat here. The two guys that are already gone from the last couple of days and what may be coming on the horizon. Let me tell you about sinus and snoring specialists before we do that. Again, the place that's got me feeling better and resting better. All the way back to 2017. I almost went 1900 something. It feels like it's been that long. 2017 is when I had the procedure done. The balloon sinuplasty procedure. These are the very latest procedures in ear, nose, and throat. And in the case of Dr. Slaughter, who you'll meet in the first consultation, he helps develop some of the instruments that they use in these surgeries. He has surgical and non-surgical options. That's different than other places. This is just the absolute best at what they do. There's your QR code. You can call them at 601-0303, or you can go to sinussnoringent.com. Be sure to tell them that you heard about it here on Orange Bloods Live. We appreciate those of you that have done it. Sinus and snoring specialists feel clear, rested, and healthy. Um, real quick catch before we get to the portal. Someone did bring up something we'll watch during the week. Mark says 80% chance of rain. I bet that will be a factor. Mark, I had not thought to look at weather yet. Catch, I just double-checked, 76% chance of rain is what I'm seeing during the daytime and then up over 50% in the evening for Saturday. So we'll watch that as the week progresses. We know all of those things can change. But, Mark, thank you for that reminder. Uh, that could He's not, not wrong like that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> hey, we – if, if the uh, – look, sir, there could be multiple inactives on Saturday. Mm-hmm. They might just and, – and the weather is one of those things that could abs- – if they're already thinking about doing that, then the idea that there could be wet a, a wet turf, again, they're, they're at the finish line for part one of all of this. I think they're going to not want to go into Monday asking themselves, why didn't we – why didn't we do this? And some things you can't control. There has to be a practice and a scrimmage on some level, but – uh, cause it's a big event, reckless Kelly. I don't know if you've heard they're going to be playing you big reckless Kelly guy. I love reckless yeah. Kelly. Yeah. I was excited to hear that they're going to play and I'm cheap. So when you tell me it's free reckless Kelly, Oh, that's a whole nother level. I've always found, I mean, I've, I've probably seen reckless Kelly play in person a dozen times. Man, that's a lot. I don't know if I'm quite at a dozen. I'd have to go look at my list. It felt like they used to play everywhere all the time. I think I don't know if Reckless Kelly is on the five timers club with me, but they're close. It's certainly three or four for sure. My mom is a known. She's not a groupie because that would imply certain things, but she's known to be seen once upon a time on the Reckless Kelly. Yeah. She was like one of she was like a, a deadhead, like for you know the Grateful Dead. That she was, she knew where they were playing, and she had like a group of friends where like they just go to 
yeah. every damn show. So as a byproduct of that, I've seen a dozen shows. The best part of that is that probably means that my sister-in-law and your mother know what each other look like, oh, even though they have no, even though they have no clue who each other is, because that's what my sister-in-law was for a good like before they had kids. Oh my God. For like two, two and a half years. Every time I talked to her, I found out where Reckless Kelly was going to be playing in the state of Texas. It felt like she was all over watching them. So, yeah, they, I, I think the band members would recognize both of oh, those. There's no today. doubt. No doubt. No, no doubt. doubt about it. Yeah, I was. Uh, that was exciting. So if you're headed out there, one o'clock is kick. But before kickoff, Reckless Kelly is going to be at Longhorn City Limits. All right, catch. We're going to update Portal. You ready to do it? Ready yes. to go? Let's Give do me it. that music. Get over here. Longhorn's a little closer to that 85 scholarship number catch. Yesterday it was Kirkland and um, and Walton that end up in the portal. Any other thoughts on those guys? Because it kind of happened while we were doing shows yesterday um, as we were trying to process it. Tell you what, hold that thought. Okay. Because I do, but I think that, I think that takes us into the meat of like the portal conversation. So I just wanted to open up with a few like nuggets and then we can get in to the discussion. Okay. Uh, number one, no big names yet really in the portal. Although Jacoby Matthews from Texas A&M entered the portal today. You'd have to tell me how, how good had that guy been in his first two years? Uh, I honestly could not, I couldn't tell you when I saw the name, I would have had, I would have to go look it up. To tell Former, you, I think maybe five star guy by a service or two. I know he was a super blue chip prospect. Um, he's played, but never really emerged as like a frontline player for the Aggies. He's in the portal. He's another member of that 2022 recruiting class that came in with such fanfare uh, and hasn't quite lived up to number one overall recruiting class in the country. But nothing new on the Texas front, nothing new on names that. Trust me, if somebody had entered the portal where we were like, you need to know this name, we may have preempted Sark and like gone straight to it. It's been a little slow so far. So uh, nothing to know with regards to like defensive tackles or big time players or anybody's name outside of Jacoby Matthews that you would want to know. And oh, by the way, Sark had an interesting comment today, Chad, about the portal said, quote, I try not to give false dreams, end quote, mm. which I thought was a straight to the point. <laughs> I it, it sounds like a good policy. It feels very blunt, right? Like I'm going to have conversations with all my guys. They're going to ask me questions. I, not, tr I try not to give false dreams. It's transparent. It can point guys in a direction. If guys are on the fence, they may hear that and think what they want to think. I think one of the things that's interesting to me, though, is they just had two second-year players in the last 24 hours who announced that they were departing. And I bet if we had asked those guys 12 months ago what Sark was trying to give them, it's, it's just strange that in recruiting, you are kind of giving false dreams. I told people yesterday with Billy Walton, you can see Billy Walton's, the situation that he was in, you could see that from 100 miles away, 200 miles away. He was at Oak Cliff. I'm in, was in Austin. Now I'm in the Woodlands. I don't know, do the math. Hundreds of miles. You could see that far away and see it coming. And yet he came to Texas because he had, I think, false dreams in his brain. That's what recruiting is all about. Selling these guys that they can be the dream. And it's really interesting that once you're on, it really is like when a car drives off a lot as a new car, your value is worth it like half what it was. And you almost have to prove that it warrants being that at that point. I'm trying not to give false dreams. 
just a, it's a fast it's a it's an unbelievable line to say out loud knowing that recruiting is actually all about selling false dreams you got Peyton Kirkland and Billy Walton to come from Oak Cliff and Orlando specifically off of selling them the idea that they could be the next great player at their position at Texas. And then when you get here, the false dream stuff is over with. It's real dreams, reality. And, you know, the the, the two, the gulf and the two extremes is really stood out to me. I'm not trying to make a bigger deal out of the comment than it is. I'm just pointing out the reality of his, its existence. The one thing when, when he uses that phrase catch to pick the part apart the words a little bit, I wonder how much of it is when does the dream become the false dream? And who recognizes it first and when is it recognized and how, you know, how about that? Cuz the dream has to be the dream at some point. Right. There are there's a three star discussion. There's a guy that deep down like Sark could tell him, hey, man, it's going to be tough, but you're going to have to fight for it. But I'm not telling you there's no chance. Yeah. And how how would you know, would we call that a false dream? I don't know. The dream is where it is in the living room. But at some point, like you said, when the rubber meets the road and things start to happen, then he's got to be able. Here's what he hopefully means. At some point, catch, you got to sit at that desk. After the kid has worn, worn the burnt orange, and then you have that real talk and go, hey, man, it's that, hardcore. that dream, that dream we talked about can happen for you. It just can't happen with our helmet on. I'm sorry. You know, yeah. like, and that's got to be a tough thing. to well, look, there, it's, it's not crystal clear because there will be young players in the program that might be frustrated about where they are on the depth chart that make have a meeting with him and say, look, I'm thinking about going into the portal. And they may say, whoa, 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 whoa. You've only been here a year. Yeah. Like you got to believe you got to, you got to put in the work, but we don't want you to leave. And we still believe in the dream. It's, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, exactly. Then, it, Yeah, you're right. It's the balancing of those two. Cause then one further year down the line, the kid could be like, Yes. What up, man? I want it out. And then and then Sark could respond with, no, you're right. Now it's the false dream. Now, <laughs> now I now we need the room. Now you're right. You're right. Sorry. You were right. My, My bad. bad. My bad. It's like the couple, right? It's like the couple that they break up a year after they would both agree they should have broken up. Yes. And one of them would say, no, nah, man, she tried <laughs> to talk me into it that February. And I said, let's try to make it work. And we paid for counseling. And damn it, by the next Valentine's Day, she was right. It was over. So, I don't like to admit it, but she was right. <laughs> right. I don't want to admit it. Don't tell her I said this because it's that last time. And she was right on the way out the door. But she was right. Yeah. $10 That's super chat from Steven says, we keep wondering if we can be like Sark's Bama offense, but we're closer to the Sark USC offense and should be asking ourselves if we can replicate that instead. Uh, does he mean USC offense like Reggie Bush, Matt Leinart, or does he mean USC offense like when he was the head coach? I took it to mean when he was a head coach. Me too. And my interpretation of that isn't that he's being specific. I don't think he's being overly literal with when he says Sark USC offense, mm -hmm. like we've got to go look up the numbers and go, what does that mean? What were they ranked in? I think it may be, yo, the Sark Bama offense was one of the best of all time. Mm -hmm. And real trying to realistically project, can you be that? It's like, you know, hey, can are we are we like the Golden State Warriors? Like when when KD showed up, like, you know, maybe. Maybe you don't set it so high. And I think, look, Stephen, I think, um, first of all, thanks for the super chat. You're not wrong. I, I think that if you've been watching this show, Steve, over the last couple of weeks, I think Chad and I've had our, our foot on the brakes a little bit. We've reminded people, look, what did I say last Monday, as a matter of fact? Stop putting this receiving core don't put their names 
in in the, in the same sentence with Adonai Mitchell and, and Xavier Worthy. Like, I think there's an acknowledgement that this offense actually isn't ready for that discussion. I think the thing we all got to remember, though, Stephen, is that people think Quinn Ewers is – the conversation nationally about Quinn Ewers is – him as a Heisman candidate, honest to God, top five betting favorite, that kind of a preseason discussion. Having won the Big 12 championship and made the playoffs, I, I think the mainstream Texas fans, just general expectation for Quinn Ewers is that he's going to play so well that he's a Heisman finalist and in the position to be a very early first round pick next year. It's hard to walk that back. It, it's it's hard to tell someone who's thinking that. And I try. Man, I try. But the reality is you're not going to be able to crack through the walls of most people. Steven, the ex, we did a poll a couple of weeks ago. More than, I think it was more than 85%. I hate to throw that number out there, but I actually think it was like 86%, Chad, if I remember correctly. 86% of the people that we polled and it ended up being like 1500 people. <laughs> we asked them what the minimum set of expectations for next season was and 85% more than said, make the playoffs and win a game in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So your question is a little, like I said, that's the sample size and that's, the breath and tones that they're speaking in, you know, it's much, it's much more likely that they will be having the Sark Bama offense conversation because they're thinking to the moon. And I don't think you're wrong. I think that there's only so far you're going to be able to get in this conversation. CBS sports put out a top 100 list yesterday it was cockamamie to steal Alex Dunlap's words without going too deep into it, though. It had Isaiah Bond as the number 14 player in the country. Hmm. Or maybe even 10. Maybe he was 10 and yours was 14. Regardless, we're going to end this camp not knowing whether or not Isaiah Bond is truly going to start next season. We think he will, but he might not. Like, he hasn't had... He, his camp has been so okay, but not maybe beyond that, that it's up in the air. And yet the perception nationally is that Texas got some badass wide receivers, one of whom is one of the best 10 players in America. So, yeah, yeah. appreciate it, Stephen, but like you, you're fighting uphill on this one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting point. Thank you for that super chat. Uh, we will put those right to the front of the line. Uh, if we get them, damn near 600 folks in the Specs chat uh, right now. We do appreciate you for that. We will hear a little bit from Specs a little later on. Right now, though, how about a little AV consultations? Make that home theater dream come true. Here's some sights and sounds for you of what they can do for you. Hi, this is Tom McKay with Audiovisual Consultations. Today's home electronics can be a bit daunting. My company has spent the last 36 years making sure they are not. For those of you who have not experienced our services yet, we'd like to invite you to give us a try for all your home electronics needs. We carry all the major brands of televisions and stereo equipment at prices you can't find in stores. And we come to you. There's no need to leave your home to find great pricing and incomparable service. No traffic, inexperienced sales geeks, or pushy showroom tactics. We believe in having some fun and dreaming big. You have a dream for your home entertainment? Let us know. We can make it come true. And we are always there to help after the job is done. We cultivate clients for a lifetime by treating everyone like their family. No, not those family members. I'm talking about the ones you actually like. So relax, hug your kids, make love to your wife, and smile. Then, when you have a moment, give us a call at 255-8678. That's 512-255-8678. Or online at avconsultations.com. Catch, I was speaking with Tom from AV Consultations yesterday. I found out something interesting. When the folks come out to the pitch on Friday, they did the whole setup. 
So everything p- the folks are going to see when it comes to the screens and the speakers and the, uh, the way it all looks, that's AV Consultation. So take a look at everything on Friday when you come see us. And uh, AV Consultations could do similar things for you in your home. Uh, as long as I'm mentioning it, let's throw up a graphic there too. There it is, your spring game mixer. It's at the pitch, 6 to 9 p.m. It's on Harris Ridge. Come join us, won't you? See there? Look at that. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's it right there. Very nice. Okay. You're going to get that in person Friday night. That's right. Exactly. Live mod. I'm just looking forward to the live modcast. The, uh, as, we, as far as we know right now, all four of the modcast guys are going to be in attendance. Catch and Anwar and Jason and Alex just cutting it up on Texas football or whatever y'all want to ask him about. Uh, and the rest of us will be there too, but I'm looking forward to that. A little bit of a live modcast with drinks for some. Like, that's good stuff. I, I can't wait for funny? That. So yesterday, I'm just going to make fun of this because sometimes all you can do is laugh at yourself. Uh-huh. We, were, we were telling people on, on the Monday Overreaction Show about the event, and Alex, he kind of like rolled his eyes and was like, oh, God. So we called him out on it. We were like, geez, Alex, (laughs) try not to be too excited about like the event that we're literally inviting people to. And he was like, well, you know, the thing is from like where I live, it's just so far away, you know, and like, I've never been there before. So for a second, I was thinking, where is this thing? Georgetown, Salado, like what? Where are we going? Where Alex thinks this, this thing's like halfway to Waco. And it's like, oh, well, no, it's, it's you know, it's where the Austin FC team practices. Not that it's far from like Palmer. Palmer. Yeah, it's not it that far like, from Palmer Lane. It's like, Alex, what are, you, what are you even complaining about? Like, we're not going out to, to Buda, which we easily could. Yeah. By <laughs> the way, and he was complaining to the guy who's coming from the Woodlands. Is that right? Yes. Make sure I have that correct? Okay. So, you know, ultimately all I can figure is that Alex, this is the truest example that Alex is turning into hermit crab old man dad. Oh, there's no doubt. But see, that's that catch. This is why this is why the live modcast is going to be great if it happens. Because all four of you guys, I can't think of one of the four of you that really will put on a show for no reason. I can't think of but none of the four of you when asked a straight question will go will go into something where we think oh they're just faking that answer oh they're just bsing now no, but true. especially Alex <laughs> like D- Alex Dunlap does not he will not give you a false answer he will not give you a fake answer he'll tell you exactly what he's thinking I just love that his eyes did exactly what he was thinking on the show live that's awesome oh he won't well, nobody controls themselves at these there's no doubt about uh, that oscar for five bucks says he meant reggie reggie he meant reggie white Leinert, but technically on paper the group is great can they form the connection is what matters Whew, man i you know what he doesn't have to pay for it oh no steve says it i think our paris our personnel matches better with 2005 USC, then 2020 Bama. He was going there. He was going there. There I am, Chad. I thought, I thought he was with. I thought he was one of the same people. I have. I and you know what? These people who were like, you know what? Let's pull the reins back a little bit. We might not quite be 2020 Alabama. Yeah. And instead, he's one of the people that I was warning him about. I'd have to go back and look like, is that really, yeah, is that really pumping the brakes if you say, okay, 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 maybe not, not 20, it. maybe not 2020 Bama. What about 05 at, uh, USC? And, and Whoa. If he's saying he thinks the personnel better matches that group, then what he's saying, if I'm, if I'm to understand it, uh-huh. he's saying that like Reggie Bush and Lindell White are what, CJ Baxter and Jaden Blue are. Whew. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, catch. That's, that's the only thing that you can think. 
Yeah, there's a difference between looking at the total numbers and looking at the way it breaks down. Because I am one of the ones that threw out the 2020 numbers just because I, I'm, I'm setting it as the goal. I just think that's what Sark would look at is, you know, could it be? Po- and then I was a little surprised to find out that this last year's Texas team outrushed that Bama team by like 250. And they're only about 600 yards away in passing yards. But that's kind of a simplistic way of looking at it. Because then you have to break it down and go, okay, that's Devontae Smith, and he did that. And that this is Najee Harris, and he did that after coming back from doing that. And then, the, you know, you have to break it all down. And once you do that in all the parts, you're like, yeah, okay, it might have been a bit of a silly question. Uh, but, hey, for that chatter, I'll go look up the 05 USC numbers and see what they got to hit. I'll do it. <laughs> It'll be – I don't know if fun's going to be the word, but I'll look it up. That's my this is my first give up of 2024. Hey, I know. literally thought that question meant one thing. I know. I did too. I and thought they were it talking meant about- the exact opposite. Yeah. I do. Here's what I like, catch. I like that some Texas fans are throwing up the goal where the team that they're shooting for has like an all-time Heisman winner on it at that moment. Like it's got, oh, you know, remember that Bama team with Devontae Smith? Yeah, that one. Or, you know, the Reggie Bush USC team that came that close to beating Vince in the long, that team. If I see a 95 Huskers mentioned or 2001 Miami. Uh, <laughs> can they be Bud Wilkinson's best team at all right? Jeez. You no know, question. I can't decide if they're more like the 1995 Cowboys or the 1994 49ers or even like the 92 Cowboys. It's it, I can't decide between those three teams. You just never know. I catch three o'clock on Saturday afternoon is going to be interesting. That's about the time we're estimating the post game show will begin for the spring game. Be sure to come join us here on Orange Bloods Live. Get your notifications so you know exactly when it's about to happen. And thank you for liking and subscribing. Saturday afternoon around three is when we're guessing post game. Me, catch. Anwar checking in from the stadium. A couple of the other guys may jump on as well. So be sure to check it out. The thing is, I can't can't shy at anybody because if I'm being completely transparent, Mm -hmm. I believe you and I, that I can remember, went to one Texas spring game together. And I can remember being on the west sideline in the 2010 spring game when Garrett Gilbert threw a laser for a touchdown pass, it was like his fourth of the spring game. Uh-huh. And I can remember turning to you and saying, this is why they're going to be better at quarterback than they were a year ago with Colt McCoy because of that. <laughs> this is it. So I have been, <laughs> I have done the thing that I'm telling people, people will do. And, um, you know, <laughs> catch i'm just i just pulled up the usc 05 it may be even a sillier question than the other one we've that that i asked with the 2020 just a quick one here reggie bush and lindale white combined that year for 40 touchdowns and over 3,000 rushing yards like I'm not looking at anything else right now. Three thousand rushing yards. They combined catch. I didn't. Even, one of them, Reggie Bush, ran for seventeen hundred and forty. Lindale ran for thirteen hundred yards. You know what's funny about that is like Texas fans like to dog Reggie Bush. Like oh. that Heisman wasn't earned. Oh. Like he was a scrub. Like what he did at USC just wasn't comparable to Vince. Yeah, that right. That's always been my thing. I've always said if I had had a vote, I would have voted for Vince. I was probably a little too close to it because I was that was my job to watch that team. I would have gone with Vince for everything I saw. But I totally get why somebody would have voted for Reggie. He needed more highlight moments. They needed more comebacks. There was more flash. And All I'm then, saying is that dude at a minimum was a 1,700 yard running back. We haven't gotten into the receiving. No. We haven't gotten into the kickoff returns. Like, 
All I'm saying is Reggie Bush was really good. That Ab- I yeah. would have voted for Vince too, but we can't act like Reggie went in it as one of the great atrocities that have happened in the history of mankind. He averaged 13 every time he caught the ball too. Anyway, I, the, I may just look, thank you for the, to that chatter. Now I'm going to go look those numbers up just to laugh later. Holy smokes. What a, what a team that was. Uh, have we played the portal combat music yet? Yeah. It feels so long ago. We can do it again. If you want, let's reset me. I need, I need the portal combat again. Yeah, we played the music, and then I tried to set you up, but I didn't do it the way you wanted to. Now it feels like it's that was like an hour ago. <laughs> Let's see if we can do this again. Let's see if we can do it again. Here we go. Fight. Get over here. <laughs> Finish him. Catch, your thoughts on the portal? <laughs> I still can't believe the show changed on a dime because somebody is looking at the personnel of the offense and felt like, you know, it's not 2020 Alabama that we're, we're more like it's 2005 USC. I just, (laughs) that is wonderful. Thank you, Steven, that you literally have made my day. I don't know if I'm going to stop smiling throughout the rest of the show. Um, and that's one day after you told him to be realistic while we were talking about three and four stars and stuff on the recruiting hour. I do love that. That's wonderful. Well Sometimes done. Sometimes I just feel like I should give up and give in, Chad. Let's no. just do a show where we compare this defense to the 85 Bears. Uh, I do like the irony of it because he's. we are talking about a team that that's all people did leading up to the game, right? The 05 Oh, five USC better or worse than the best armies in the best wars. All right. <laughs> yes. Down, please. Um, look, the question is going to be who's next. And everybody has the, th- the thing that Chad asked me earlier today was, is there anybody that could come out that would surprise you? Because, Kirkland and Walton were guys that you just kind of went, eh, yeah, I mean, a little early, but they they fit a mark. And I told Chad, I said, look, man, there's 85 guys on this team. It, technically, it's still 86. Mm-hmm. Only about 50-ish when you include special teams and some, guy, some positions that might have and or ors next to them. You got about 50 guys who are on the depth chart. And you got about 35, 36 guys that are not. And anybody from that pile of three dozen human beings that puts their name into the portal will fall into the category of can't be that big of a surprise why they're not on the two deep. That's where this entire conversation starts. Everybody that's going to be leaving in the portal at least so far for Texas. I mean, we have seen other guys, big name guys. I don't want to go Walter Nolan yet, but like teams lose badass starters. A lot of times we see it and it's head coaching and it's this and it's that, or it's team that struggled. One of the things that Texas fans don't do enough appreciation for is Texas does a pretty damn good job of retention of their good players. They have not been lo- they have not been like Kelvin Banks left. Oh my camera fell down. What the hell? I was just I was gonna tell you to readjust, maybe, because the top of your head was getting cut off, and then you went bam, and then you then you saw it move. Yeah, and then I saw it dip down. Um <laughs> they do a real good job of retention. So what if a starter put his name into the portal, I'd be really surprised. If it's any of three dozen guys, I won't be. So that's your big pool of guys. Anybody that's not and, – and so what you really would do is you say, you're not going to count the true freshmen who are on campus, and it's actually a pretty big number. It's like 19. So you take that 50 that are on the two deep, you take that group of true freshmen, you've got like 69. Now you're looking at a group uh, that is 20-ish – a little bit less than that. They're not on. They're not on the two deep. 
if they're out of state and not on the two deep, that is like double jeopardy. If they're out of state or if the out of state is one thing, the other thing is how old are they? Mm. Because what did we see yesterday? We saw two red shirt freshmen get the hell up on out of Dodge. Yep. Every year that goes beyond that adds a layer, an extra layer of anxiety that the player is feeling. So the older a guy is and he's not on that too deep, the more likely he is that he'll consider a transfer. And then again, then if you add like an old guy and out of state, those are real prime guys because there's always this thought, and we see it all the time with guys that Texas bring in. There's a romantic idea of like coming home if you're out of state, you know, going closer to home. And it's a romantic novel when the answer is Texas. It's Trey Moore had a chance to play at Texas. Adonai Mitchell had a chance to go from Georgia back home to Texas. All of those stories get written and it's got a chance to be closer to family or a son or a girlfriend or a mom or whomever. And, you know, so that's why the out-of-state guys are just a tad more likely to leave uh, in one of these situations than an in-state guy. There is always this idea of I could just go home. So we're waiting. We're waiting to see the names. Texas is sitting at 86. Chad, one of the questions I was going to give you as a buy or sell, and I hadn't entered it in yet, was like buy or sell, you believe that Texas will be closer to 80 by the end of the week, like by Saturday, than 85. It'll be close. The num- yeah, the number in my head's been 82. Yeah, like, it would make that a buy. You'd be like, yeah, 82 is closer to 80 yeah. than 85. So yeah. if I was Vegas and I set that number at 82 and a half, yeah, because I, my, my thought has been the leeway would be three. Give yourself the opportunity to get three coming back from yes. somewhere. That's been I, the number in my head. But I think if you just think about the roster, they just lost two guys that I don't think going into the spring anybody was really thinking about. I can tell you that in, in mid-March, people – not Kirkland's name wasn't coming up. And Walton's name wasn't coming up. So Texas just – have and, and Samaj Burrell's name wasn't coming up. Now, look, he's he's gone for set, a different reason, but all of the guys that have left so far in the last week, either because they got thrown off the team or they decided to leave, were all redshirt freshmen, all of them. Samaj Burrell, Peyton Kirkland, um, and Billy Walton. And coming into the spring – I feel like there was between 12 and 15 players that Texas fans were like, this guy could leave, this guy could leave, this guy could leave. And look, you and I, it's icky to talk about guys specifically. Try not to do it. Um, but I think there's a I think there's a fairly large list that Texas fans would tell you, like, we could come up with 10 names that we think would be trimming the fat you know, opening up space on the roster because this this person's not quite up to snuff for, for whatever reason. So, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if, if it were 80 on Sunday. I wouldn't be shocked. That's just hmm. six more names. Um, I could, could they end up in the 70s? Like, that's wild to think about considering earlier this week they were sitting at 89. But, you know, like, it will be curious to see what Sarkeesian, I would imagine he wouldn't want to lose that much. They don't need to lose that much. You don't, I don't think they'd want to be that low. I don't think they're looking to add six more players. You know, the thing about the portal is, though, that we know they'd like to, if they could, get a couple of defensive tackles. A punter might be needed. That is the one thing none of us have talked about all spring that feels kind of ominous. Who in the hell's punting for this team? Yeah. Nobody knows. Catch, uh, catch. They're going to be as good or better than 05 
USC and 2020 Bama. Leonard's going to punt. Duh. Who, the, who could name me the punter for the 05 USC team right now? Nobody. Not even Leonard. <laughs> Leonard doesn't know who the punter was. They scored too damn much. Don't worry about it. You're fine. It's a fair point, Chad. Fair I mean, point. So, somebody tell Sark and Jeff Banks, the special teams coordinator, it'll be fine. You're good. No problem. Let one of the let one of the big guys on the team do it. 300 pounders can boom the ball sometimes. Um, it would be funny, just like if Vernon Broughton's like value to the team came, he's the best punter. Is Vernon Broughton would, back there booming them? If they run a defensive lineman back there on Saturday, that'd be that would be one of the wildest things I've ever seen. That'd be so good. Probably reporting on Arch Manning nationally, but deep down, we'll all be thinking, Did you see the punter? Wait a minute. Did Colin Simmons just punt the ball? No, he's not big place? enough. It needs to be. I want Sadir Mitchell kicking okay, the Okay, you want the big. I got you. Okay, right. Yeah. I want the extra. Somebody put Connor Stroh back there. I want to see oh. how far he can kick it. Oh, um, wow. That's fantastic. So I think, you know, like the profiles are real simple. You don't have to say the names out loud. Yeah. Like the one name that feels like has been thrown out there, even today on some level, we talked about the running back position. Um, Sark mentioned five. There's six guys on scholarship. Jay you know Blue, Brad's got it. Arch does it. Arch does the Danny white. Perfect. Good job. Oh. Brad. That's it. Arch goes Danny white and excites me and catch as Cowboys fans. That's what'll happen. <laughs> and the Nate, if we had some Arch Manning punting video to give sports center this weekend, Oh, God. Can you imagine if he punted like a coffin corner 45-yarder and it turned sideways and ran out of bounds? <laughs> oh, my He's the top in the number one on the top ten list. It would be. It would be. Why was Arch Manning punting? But look what he did. <laughs> Somehow, SVP would make it into a bad beat. He'd have had yeah. the under on that. Um, I think that, you know, back to the running back deal. Jaden Blue, Savion Red, Trey Wisner, Cedric Baxter, Christian Clark, Jarek Gibson. Six guys. Today, Sark singled out five of them. The guy that didn't get singled out uh, was Savion Red. Is Savion Red um, on the 2D? No. Is Savion Red out of state and not on the 2D? No. He's he's from the Metroplex. Is he an oldish player and not on the 2D? Well, he's scheduled to be a junior this year. Ding, 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 ding. Like, you don't even have to ask the question. Mm -hmm. When you when you want to know about a player, whether or not they should, if you think that they might end up in the portal, ask yourself those questions. And, and, and there's a strong likelihood that you're going to find some yeses because almost half the team's not on the 2D. It's not far from it. So you've got between, you know, 44 and 50, if you include special teams guys, which doesn't even include Burt Auburn because he's not on scholarship, but it does include Lance St. Louis. So everybody forgets about him, but he's a deep snapper. Hmm. Uh, but he ain't going anywhere because he's your starting deep snapper. Yeah. So you add up all those guys and then you got a very large pool of players. It's not exclusive to just a few. And I think yesterday, Kirkland and Walton proved that. It is House Divided on this Tuesday. Uh, up over 660 folks in the Specs chat. We do appreciate you there. Let's give Specs their love. They can get you all stocked up uh, before the spring game gets started. Here we go. You're needing Specs same day delivery can save the day with our Specs app or online shopping. From world class wines to hard to find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods, delicious snacks, and spectacular sweets. It's Specs. Cheers to savings. And by the way, to Steven and some of those chatters going back and forth on it, I will go look up those numbers. And Steven, if we misinterpreted uh, anything that you were trying to say uh, about that team, we, we didn't mean to. We don't think you're being necessarily crazy, maybe a little ambitious, uh, but we will we'll look it up. Uh, we'll check it out. And I think we had some super chats. Um, oh, Chad. He brings was up enough. the words in me. It was me. It was me, I think, because Oscar tried to clarify with his own super chat. Did we get this one? Yes. Yeah. He did mean that. Yeah, technically on paper, the group is great. Can they form connections? I think there was another one about 
just the formatics of it in terms of the way it would be the in way the way the offense would be called would it be more of the style they had at an 05 USC than it was 2020 well, Alabama he said that it was that the personnel of the Texas offense was better suited towards a 2005 comparison than a 2020 and yeah. i thought in order to be able to say that you must be pointing at the Texas running backs and yeah. thinking that they can reproduce and be to this current Texas team what Bush and Lindell White were to the 05. And that, that sent us down the rabbit that's hole. It. Yeah, no, that's it. I think we were, I think we were pretty fair to the discussion there. Uh so hopefully, it was hopefully fun that's discussion. True. Nobody, what? nobody get in their feelings. No, no, and I'm definitely gonna go look at those numbers. I'm the one that looked up those 2020 numbers and and made shows out of it. So if I'm that maniac, I'll definitely go check out the 05 stuff. Don't you worry about it. Um, all right, so we're getting some good chats in. We'll clean that off. We got buy or sell coming up. Um, also, just I love a good random chat. Darwin is SMU in the ACC this year. Yes, as far as I know, that does start this year. Good and question. You know what, man? That has paid off for them. I know that people are like, they're going to buy their way into the conference? Like, does that even count? It does. And recruits care, and they've been noticing. And I already can tell you that's a – think about what happened in basketball. Right. SMU going to go the ACC literally triggered an entire, like, slew of basketball-related events. Yeah, I wouldn't very. have thought that it would do it, Chad, but SMU got themselves a seat at the big table. Yeah, they did. It's very, it, yeah, it was wild, but you're right. And even though they're going to take what is it, seven or nine years where they get no money? They're like, we're no, good. It's, yeah, no, we're fine. We're in the we're in the ACC. It'll uh, it'll Just work let us out. play Florida State and Clemson and claim us as brothers. That's they're true. like Ramsey Snow trying to be. Uh, well, no, Ramsey Bolton. Excuse me. It's like Ramsey Bolton trying mm -hmm. to be claimed by his dad. He'll do anything. Look at you. That was at SMU. Look at you with a Game of Thrones reference. I do like yeah, that. I said Ramsey Snow. Yeah, you just Which mixed I just, up. Was, I, I was counting the bomb. I'm a bastard too. We were. I was just counting all the bastards. You just put it at your. It was. It was. It was a meeting I, of the I, bastards. I club. It was a bastards club meeting. Uh, just got it. Got it. Got it all mixed up. Uh, before we get to buy or sell, let me remind everybody about Taste on Main. This is the place I'm going to go uh, celebrate. My anniversary coming up. My wife and I were born in May. Born in May. My wife and I were married in May. We were actually born in different months. But we were married in May, and we're going to go celebrate right here at Taste on Main, downtown Buda. We've been there before, and it is awesome. It will definitely bring you back. Again, these are the Hay City Store people, Travis and Tamara. Just crank it up to steakhouse level. In fact, they've got a chicken fried ribeye. If you want to go after it, they've got that for you. Plus great seafood and pasta. A couple great bar areas. We always have a great time there. We're definitely going to do that coming up in May. And they got a brunch you may want to check out. Saturdays and Sundays, 10 to 3, is when they do brunch at Taste on Main. If you're looking for a place to hit, it's uh, not a bad idea there in downtown Buda. All right. That's where, uh, we, make, that's where we need to make Alex go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's the one? Yes. Because he's really no, wait. Say, Oh, God. <laughs> the further south we can make him go, the worse it'll be. Yeah, we're going to do it at the outlet malls in San Marcos. <laughs> oh, that's great. Are All right. Uh, buy or sell? I am ready. Who's first? I'm going to let you go first. I may not have them typed into the system, but I am ready. All right. We're going to start by going vertical catch. Buy or sell number one spring game prediction. We will see one deep touchdown pass from Quinn and one from Arch on Saturday. Ball's got to travel 40 yards or more in the air. I'm going to sell. Okay. Uh, we'll get uh, we'll get one from one of them, but not both. All right. Fair enough. Uh, let's go to tonight in the NBA. Buy or sell number two. The two Western Conference play-in games happen tonight. You'll take the Lakers and the Warriors to win. Buy. Sure. Okay. Both on the road, interestingly enough, tonight. Uh, the 7-8 game is Lakers at New Orleans. Golden State is at Sacramento in the 9-10 game. Everything's TNT for play-in games tonight. Catch back to the spring game. Buy or sell number three. We'll do that post-game for the spring game about 3 o'clock or so on Saturday. Join us here on Orange Bloods Live. The 
rude awakening freak out factor reality check for Texas fans will be at DEFCON 3 at Hold that on. point. That's that was one the rude awakening freak out factor reality check for Texas fans will be at I'm I'm gonna say sell. Okay. I don't think they're gonna be, I don't think they'll be that high on the DEFCON meter. Got you. Okay, it'll be a little calmer than that. Yeah. More towards a four or a five. I got you. Okay, just check it. Because we all know what the spring game can do to a fan base. Like, it just it's a freaky experience. It's you against you. If you're great, it means you also suck. If you're questionable, it means you're also good. Like, it's just – it's so bizarre. Uh, we'll see what Texas fans do with it by 3 or 3.30 or so. That's when we'll jump on right here on Orange Bloods Live. Catch, we will finish off with a couple of birthdays. And the first one is a legend in basketball. Buy or sell number four. Today is Kareem's 77th birthday. He is the center in my all-time starting five. But you'll go with another big man. Sell. Kareem is my starting big man in my all-time top five. Gotcha. Yeah, love me some Kareem. Hated those Lakers growing up. Because I'm was i a Mavs guy and all that. But, man, I'd go with Kareem. Happy 77 to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Speaking of legends, let's finish with a Longhorn legend. Buy or sell number five catch. Kat Osterman also celebrates a birthday today. For you, she is the most dominant UT female athlete ever, full stop. Why? Okay. Yeah. You know, I was thinking of, uh, I mean, there have been some track athletes. So mm-hmm. that's really what I was trying to run down in my head. Right. Do I think any of the gold medal winning, but I'll go with Kat. Like, yeah, I mean, she's Kat. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it, it, there, that's not a bad answer. Although, like I said, I'm giving some respect to some pretty badass other women's athletes that the Longhorns have had over the years. For the record, Catch, we all know there's great cat stats all over the place. Here's one I found. Uh, in her debut with Texas, she pitched six innings. They were shutout innings. She gave up two hits and struck out 11. So clearly she was terrible from day one. <laughs> That's yeah. the debut. Not bad. All right. Happy birthday, cat. Here we go. You take that down. I'm just going to spit. Okay. Buy or sell number one if I set the over and um, under at 3.5, you'll take the over number of Quinn Ewers participated drives on Saturday. 3.5 over under. This is Quinn Quinn's Ewers drives. Correct. Quinn. Quinn Ewers drives 3.5. And you're saying the buy or sell is I'm taking the over? Over. You think there will be at least four? Oh, yeah. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Got to be four drives. Got to be four drives from this, from, from that guy? Absolutely. I would think there have to be four. You're, you're constructing this thing where he's not going to get touched. He's got a clean pocket every time. Nobody's crushing Quinn Ewers in the spring game. They all know that. We're just thumping. So, yeah, got to have four drives. Got to have five. Got to have five before you even think about it. I've got a man's game question for you. Buy or sell number two. In honor of Steven's question, Mm -hmm. you believe that Jaden Blue is closer to Reggie Bush than C.J. Baxter is to Lindell White. (laughs) Man's game. That really is a man's game. Jaden Blue is closer to Reggie Bush then C.J. Baxter is to Lindell White. <sighs> I guess it's a buy. I guess it's a buy, and I'll use that to kind of challenge C.J. Baxter because I have not seen enough from C.J. Baxter to make me think, well, damn, that's Lindell White, 1,300 yards in a year, kind of <laughs> good. So, yes. But, yeah, th- 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 let's do that. Buy or sell number three, Blake Griffin, six-time All-Star in the NBA, former OU great, announced his retirement today. All right. Buy or sell. You didn't even know he was still playing. (laughs) Buy. No idea. (laughs) No clue. You can't name the team that he was with as recent as last night. 
I am glad for him, though, that he's been able to extend the career a little bit because this version of basketball doesn't always allow for that because they're bringing these new guys in so much on the front end. It kind of kicks the older guys out, I think, sooner than maybe they want to sometimes. So I hope he got to go as long as he wanted to. Uh, but, yeah, I didn't realize. Didn't realize he was still in the league. Bye. I've got two questions left. I'm saving a hotter than for number five. Okay. Buy or sell number four. Hmm. I'm staring at a picture of Michael Jordan jumping from the free throw line right now. Mm -hmm. So I'll just make up a Michael Jordan question because I am doing this on the fly. Buyer okay. sell number four. You think the young generation on a scale of one to 10 is at about a five when it comes. And I'm talking about people under the age of 30 mm -hmm. on a scale of one to 10. They're about a five when it comes to knowing and understanding the greatness of Michael Jordan. Uh, at about a five out of ten and a same who do these LeBron James stands do yeah. they really know what Jordan was like really about? I will sell and say they're more like a six or seven. I'll say there's enough knowledge of, of what Michael Jordan was, even if they would argue to us that they think LeBron is better. I'll say it's past the <laughs> midway point. I got. I hope would hope they would give Jordan at least that much love. So I'll I'll say it's like a six six point five kind of thing. I'll say. Baby cell question like four B. Okay. MJ's dunk from the free throw line overrated. Uh, oh, bye, because it wasn't from the free throw line. I mean, he stepped on it. You need to be behind it if you're going to really do that. Dr. J was behind the free throw line. I saw that one and it was awesome. Everybody lost their mind on Mike. I was rooting for Mike that night. It was a great dunk. Hung in the air really well and hung in the air better than Doc. But if you're really going to get me there, you got to go from behind the line. We got to stop acting like he he didn't step on the line. He did. All right. And finally, buy or sell number five. Last night was the WNBA draft. Yes. The women came to the draft. Oh, man. And they dressed up better than the men dress up for the draft. Yep. So in honor of what we got last night, buy or sell number five. It's a game of hotter than, and they're literally in their primes right now. Here we go. Angel Reese, hotter than Caitlin Clark. <sighs> Bye. Bye. Both looked really good last night. Love the shimmer on both. Um, that, that, whoever thought of that look for Caitlin Clark? That's a that's a wild way to go for her, but bravo. And whoever thought of the hooded backless thing for uh, Angel Reese, well done, well done. Yeah, I'm gonna lean a little bit, uh, a little bit Angel Reese's way there. There's a little more ad hotness. Sometimes is about attitude, and Angel's got more of that attitude that pushes me towards saying that 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 she's hotter. Yeah, both very attractive. I'll tell you who else. La's first pick. Uh, Miss Brink, oh, 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 wow, that was six foot four of lookout. That was well done, well done. But I'll take Angel Reese in your buy or sell, in your hottest. I thing. think you're right, and I think you answered the question correctly. Thank you. I do hey, think that Caitlin Clark is sneaky hot. She is. Like she, when she's yeah. flashing like the midriff and the torso, and I was like, like you that know. Look. That was a great look for her. I never would have thought of it for really anybody. But, I mean, like, that was a wild combo of looks. She pulled it off well. She almost had, like, a – it it had, like, a like a hot soccer player vibe to it. And she showed off the body well. And Angel was – the way Angel's dress fit her last night was just unbelievable. I was in a text group last night with men who were openly swooning for Reese. Oh, but she looked incredible. Uh, she, I had, there, there, in my text group last night, just like the there way was some, there were there was drooling taking place. Catch, I think there were some some text message cat calls. It was was out it was out of bounds. The way Brink's dress fit her, that white number she wore, the way Reese's dress fit, the the second player who I admit I'm not as familiar with, I think her last name is Jackson from Tennessee. The second player LA took. She looked um she might have hey, looked better. Ball clap for the women. They did it last night. Like she you know they better. wanted to style and impress. Yeah. And she they, did. Better they did. They did. 
Yeah, she might have looked better than anybody. Uh, I watched about to. I watched about the top ten. I didn't watch past that. But uh, yeah, they look great, man. The big you know names. What happened to me last night? Big names showed up. What happened? Man, I was watching Raw. Okay. And then they went to like a triple threat, number one ranked contenders match for the tag team titles. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm out on this. I just didn't care. So mm -hmm. I hit the live button because I don't know what the hell's on TV on the Monday before the play. There's no college basketball. There's no NBA because they're taking a rare night off. Yeah. I, I didn't know what was on TV. So I hit the live button on, on my YouTube TV package. So you think you can dance is back on Fox. Oh, good Lord. I know you're excited about that. I was I've in. Never, I was in. I have, I've never met anyone who likes that show more than you do. I was in. You, you should know that. You are the king of the So You Think You Can Dance Club. I, I don't know anyone that likes I, it more than you. I missed all the tryouts, so I didn't know any of the dam dancers. As I get older, I do feel a little creepier, you know, because <laughs> there's like a 30-year age, 30 year age gap now almost in between hey, me and the dancers. We just did a full breakdown of the WNBA draft outfits. You should, I mean, come on. Yeah, but those are legit women. They're in their they 20s. Are. They can That's legally true. drink. Nah. I'm telling you, lot, like, on So You Think You Can Dance, you'll get some, like, literally just got out of prom. And it's, <laughs> you know, like, I'm watching it for the dancing, but a lot of the dancing is suggestive. You think it's a so, so, yeah, so it turns into a so you think you can drink version of so you think you can dance. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying there are times when I enjoy the 21 and up dancers. Ah. More so than like, okay. I think that girl might have been like delivering a newspaper yesterday. I don't know <laughs> yeah. who delivers <laughs> newspapers anymore. Who is, is she babysitting somebody? Because that's, that sh you shouldn't be on that television show. Uh, let's clean up a couple of chats. Close on. Couple chats real quick, catch. Uh, Steven is giving me some direction here. He says, Chad, I would rather you go look up run percentage and pass percentage plays rather than just pure numbers. You know what, Steven? I will do it. We'll look at percentage of runs and passes. I'll look up 20 Bama. I'll look up 05 uh, USC. The thing to... is, couldn't you find a different team if it was about run pass percentages? Wasn't there a different team you could pick? Let the man, let the man. Have his dream. Let the there man better have be an extreme difference. Yeah, there, if we'll it comes see. back and one team was fifty-seven percent and the other team was fifty-five and a half. Yeah, Stephen, we're, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Also, Oscar asked me, Chad, is the safety from A and M a big loss? Oscar, I don't know if I would go big loss. He was a guy I was hoping would take that next step, though. Sophomore, big six-two corner. 40-something tackles or so. Didn't do a ton against the pass, but he was one of those guys I was hoping was going to take the next step. So from that perspective, yes. From what AM did in the portal, which we all know was highly active, uh, they're they're obviously counting on, you know, they, they're going to be counting on other guys. So that's kind of the way I would answer that one. But I thought he was a pretty good player. Um, and back to Buck Wild says he's happy and terrified at uh, having his first child buck wild once again we wish you nothing but the best safe travels out there on the roads uh earn that money because you're gonna need it if you're about to have your first child hope everything is good with you and catch finally el presidente hit us up early and said they uh it was at parents weekend in norman thought it was interesting the sooners are charging for the spring game whereas texas's spring game is free athletic department nil game strong in atx El Presidente, thank you for that one. Catch, where do you stand on spring games and ticket prices? Do you think they need to charge for spring games? No, and that's pathetic. I like, mean, how much money are you really raising by charging five bucks? They get twenty thousand. You've you've gained a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, I just you get like. The thing is, I don't think Texas would do that because I think they know their fans would potentially stay home. You want to try to get a good crowd out there. I think it yeah. feels like squeezing your donor base. I don't – yeah, it's like I, I can't remember. I 
you know, from my perspective as an AM fan, they've done it both ways. Like during someone's time, they charge one year. I may have actually paid to go to an AM spring game at one one point. I'm not going to absolutely tell you I didn't, but I don't like the idea. I'm with you. It needs to be free. And, you know, I know, you know, with like Ohio State getting 80,000 last weekend, I'm assuming that means it was 80,000 that didn't pay, but some have done it. Didn't Dion do it last year at Colorado? I don't even remember. Like that's I not wanna, something I keep track of, but yeah. you know, I, it's not what I would do. I think Dion did. I'm with you though. I would rather have it be a free situation. All right, catch. Uh, what else we got? That's it. All right. Uh, we want to remind everybody this afternoon at four, the modcast will hit you. Remember Tuesdays and Thursdays at four, the modcast. Don't forget the live version of the modcast out there at the pitch. Six to nine on Friday evening. That's right. Come see us at the pitch. Meet the Orange Bloods folks if you haven't. Like me and Catch and some others. We'll have a good old time out there at the pitch. Uh, six to nine p.m. on Friday. Talking spring game and whatever the heck else you want to talk about. Thank you for liking, subscribing. Get those notifications so you'll know exactly when our post game show starts for the spring game on Saturday. We'll estimate about three o'clock, but you never know. So get those notifications so you get it taken care of. Thanks to everybody in the specs chat. We got damn near seven hundred folks as we are getting ready to close the door. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. We'll be back tomorrow for a Wednesday show at noon. We are house divided.